commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Politics, religion, finances, all the topics your grandmother told you not to discuss with friends. And now, your host, Matthew Dowling, and today's guests on Commonalities. Thank you for joining another episode of Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling. My guest today is a friend and colleague of mine, Senator Greg Rothman. Greg served in the Pennsylvania House with me and uh, is a newly minted Pennsylvania state senator. Greg, I want to thank you for being with me today and uh, want to give you an opportunity at the start of the show here to give a little bit of your background, uh, you know, how you got into politics and how you, uh, you got to your current seat in the Pennsylvania Senate. Thanks, Matt, and great seeing you. It was uh, it was an honor serving with you. We had uh, did some important stuff in the House together. Um, I served in the House, as you said, for seven years. Uh, prior to that, um, I spent about 30 years in real estate, um, real estate brokerage and appraising, a little bit of development uh, in the Harrisburg area. I grew up in this area. Uh, I was always interested in politics and certainly understood the role that uh, the state government has in uh, in our business and in our lives um and so i cared about who the who was holding office um as i said about seven years ago my state representative who had been there for a long time left there was a special election uh, i was chairman of the county party and um we had a conferee process and uh, i wasn't uh wasn't really satisfied with the way um it was shaping up and a couple of people came to me and said, well, you know, maybe you should run. And I thought I would just finish out the term about six or nine months. And I ended up uh, getting there and meet, meeting some great people like like yourself and um, thought, well, this is important work. I, I I thought that politics is too serious to be left to politicians. So that that's why I ran in the first place and um, ended up being able to get a lot done and stop a lot of bad things, too. Um, and during uh, redistricting, um, the the uh, new map for the House, basically my seat was sent in three different directions. So it became three different seats. Um, and the Democrats were successful in redistricting my House seat away. But meanwhile, they created a, a Senate seat that was uh, perfect. I thought perfect for my background and my um, philosophy. And, and uh, my House district was 100 percent within the Senate district. So I ran for that. And, uh, won a, a contested primary and then a general contested general election. So um, for those keeping score, I had seven contested elections in seven years and we won them all. So um, I've um, I spent um, I went to college in Massachusetts, at, uh, in Amherst, Massachusetts at UMass was a political science major, went to graduate school at Johns Hopkins and got a master's degree in real estate, spent 10 years in the Marine Corps Reserve. I was uh, in artillery in the Marine Corps. Uh, I've got five children, uh, four girls, one of whom has a fifth birthday today, and uh, and one boy. Of course, the boy's my favorite, right? Right, Matt. It's, <laughs> um, but anyway, I uh, uh, grew up in this area in central Pennsylvania. I've lived here all my life, and uh, love representing it. That's, well, that's my, get, uh, my elevator speech. So you are, uh, you like I said, you're a newly minted senator, and. Uh, I wanted to get your opinion on the way things are kind of breaking down here as a new session has started uh, with a new governor. Of course, we have a, a Democratic governor with Governor Josh Shapiro. Um, the Pennsylvania House, for the first time in many years, is uh, being controlled by the Democrats. And then we still have a Republican majority in the Senate. You know, how do you foresee those three factions working together um, kind of to get things accomplished? And, you know, I, I know the House is uh, is really behind in getting organized and getting off the ground, uh, especially as we're coming to what would traditionally be the beginning of budget season. So, uh, you know, how do you see those three factions being able to to work together here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, as soon as you and I leave, the whole place goes to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it'll be interesting. Um, 
you know, you know the dynamic from having served there too. Um, 203 is a lot of people. Um, you know, we, we talk about herding cats. Um, you know, to get 102 people on the same page for anything is difficult, um, which is why, you know, having a, having a healthy majority like we had when you and I served, um, you know, still, um, despite that, we still didn't get everything done we wanted to get done in the House. So, um, I mean, it looks as if, I don't know, I mean, it's going to be 102 to 101 or 102 to 100 next week. Um, uh, and then, you know, in my seven years in the House, there was always some vacancy and there was always someone, uh, whether they were, um, you know, under indictment or running for another office or had health issues or, um, you know, had, had other conflicts weren't there. And so if you're not there now, all of a sudden the numbers change again. And um, I, I thought after the election, you know, realizing that Democrats had picked up the majority in the House, um, that the Senate would end up being a, a, a backstop and that we and the, the Republicans in the Senate would stop bad things from happening. Um, now, um, based on the sort of dysfunction of the House um, and, the, and the really the difficulty that either party is going to have um, in coming up with a solid majority uh, to get things done that I think the Senate Republicans are going to be the caucus that actually gets stuff done. And we're going to be the leadership, the leaders in, uh, in an agenda and send it to the House. And um, the House is going to have to accept it if they can't come up with an alternative where they get 102 votes. So and, and as you know, um, though your listeners might not, you know, most of the stuff that gets done in the legislature happens around budget time. So, um, you know, the governor's got uh, an ambitious agenda, uh, has has done some good things already, I think. And we're going to uh, we hope that, you know, his campaign uh, rhetoric matches the reality of his policies. Uh, and then let's find what we can agree to, um, which is the you know, that's how the real world exists. Right. You compromise and you. Um, you, you, I, I want this, you want that. That's how you negotiate. That's what I did in real estate for 30 years. And uh, I think that's what's going to end up happening. But the negotiations are likely going to be between the governor and the Senate Republicans uh, with the House just having to accept whatever we come up with. Well, and, and I think regardless of what party you're a member of or, or what you think of, um, you know, of his campaign promises, Josh Shapiro is uh, is a phenomenal politician, and uh, and that's one thing that I saw over my time uh, in the House as he was Attorney General was the fact that uh, he's very good at at playing the game. So hopefully, um, you know, he will continue to to do some of those things and to work with members of the Senate to. Uh, to get some ideas off the ground as we do move through uh, this budget season and and start to hit some of those priorities. You know, as someone who came from the Pennsylvania House and is now in the the Senate and, uh, you know, not even looking at the, the dysfunction that's happening in the Pennsylvania House right now, but what do you see as some of the biggest differences um, you know, now that you're serving in uh, in the upper chamber of of the Pennsylvania legislature, compared to when you were in uh, in the Pennsylvania House. Yeah, so uh, obviously it's a smaller body. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support Commonalities and help keep us on the air by making a donation of $5, 10 or $25 or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities.online. Hello Uniontown, Mayor Bill Gerke here. 
There's nothing quite like the feeling of home, that sense of belonging, those fall Friday nights under the lights, those winter nights in the gym watching our Red Raiders, those refreshing spring afternoons at Bailey Park rooting on our Red Raiders softball and baseball teams. I am grateful for those memories and hope our community's children and grandchildren can enjoy those memories too. But to do that, we have to plan for the future. During my first term in office, the city has got Bailey Park back to a place where we can be proud of. Begun our city's first comprehensive plan in over 20 years. Started work on the city's section of the Sheepskin Trail. Worked on eliminating blighted properties and are rebuilding the city's neighborhoods. We've updated the faulty equipment in the parking garages and we're bringing a more competitive, reliable, faster and less expensive internet service to our city residents. We have done a lot, but there's still more to do. So I, Bill Gerke, am running for a second term. We're Uniontown proud, we're Uniontown strong, and together we can continue to rebuild Uniontown for the next generation. Paid for by Mayor Bill Gerke. When it comes to buying a home, what you see isn't exactly what you get. That's why home buyers should call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. You'll see colorful flowers, freshly painted walls, granite countertops, gleaming hardwood floors and other touches. What you can't see is the cracks, ancient plumbing, dangerous wiring, or broken appliances that might be revealed when you hire a home inspector. And when it comes to home inspectors, knowing yours has the qualifications and experience needed should be your number one concern. Dave Dowling with Grandview Inspections is an architectural engineer with over 30 years of commercial construction experience and hundreds of inspections under his belt. A home inspection is an opportunity for you to hire an expert to walk through the home and prepare a report outlining the home's major components, what needs immediate attention, and what will require maintenance after you move in. Your home is one of your biggest investments, so make sure your investment is everything you hoped it to be. Call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. I'm Melinda Delarose. As an assistant district attorney, I've protected Fayette County families and fought to uphold our constitutional rights. As a prosecutor and trusted local attorney, I've provided victims of crime with a strong voice and put criminals behind bars. My pledge to you as judge is to follow the law, always maintain the highest ethical standards, and to run a courtroom that's respectful of your time and tax dollars. I'm Melinda Delarose, asking for your vote for judge. Paid for by friends of Melinda Delarose. So, so there are 50 members in the Senate compared to 203 in the House. So because of that, you have an opportunity to get to know your colleagues uh, in, in a more intimate way. Um, we're also, um, you know, we have a uh, smaller, you know, we're on more committees. I'm on, I think, five or six committees. I chair one, I'm vice chairman another. So your interaction with your colleagues is a lot um, more. And I believe that you know, the, the familiarity actually breeds cooperation and respect. And so if you see a person, you get to know someone, it's it's harder to um, um, it's harder to 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 be unkind to them. <laughs> that's that's uh, in the house. There's so many people and you get insulated in your own party or your own region or your own caucus. Um, and it makes it easier for people to take jabs at each other because they don't know each other. And so. Um, and the con, you know, the, the, the inverse of that is that we can work together because we know each other. So I see more, um, more civility, um, more um, of a, you know, a, of relationships between senators and, uh, and a mutual respect, uh, which I already have. I mean, I, I had for some members that I had served with when we were in the House together. But, you know, guys like Marty Flynn, who's the chairman of the, the Democratic chairman of the Transportation Committee, we served together in the House. Or Jimmy Dillon from Northeast Philadelphia. I'm just getting to know, um, you know, so that that makes life a little, little different, and I think in in many ways better, the Senate.
So you mentioned committees and, uh, you know, in, in the House, it took about 10 years for an individual to uh, get a chairmanship of a committee. Um, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to, you know, rattle off some of the committees that you're on, but also to talk about um, the committee that you're now chair of and uh, some of the legislative priorities that you have on that committee. Yeah, so you're right. I, I probably would have never become a chairman in the House, certainly um, not not this term, um, but I uh, am a um, chairman of the Game and Fisheries Committee, uh, which my district has is a very rural district outside of the suburban core of uh, uh, Hampton and East Pensboro and Camp Hill, the, the um, you know, sort of the southeast, uh, southwest of Cumberland County. But the rest of it, I have all of Perry County and Upper Dolphin County and all of Western Cumberland County. So I have a lot of hunters and some of the best fishing in the uh, entire state, maybe in the nation. I mean, Latort, Yellow Breaches, and even the Susquehanna River has great fishing. So um, it's um, it's a very important committee. We regulate the Game Commission and the Fish and Boat Commission. Um, we're responsible for oversight of the, I think it's 1.6 million acres of um, state game lands. Uh, and um, we help uh, give guidance to the commissions, both the Fish and Boat and the Game Commission are independent commissions, but we do have oversight over them. So, um, for instance, I think while you were in the legislature, we were together, we voted on Sunday hunting, which was a very controversial issue, but also is a very popular issue. Uh, so the you know million plus hunters and million plus fishers and uh, fisher people who fish, I guess, um, you know, care about what our committee does. And so, um, you know, whether we open on a Saturday or a Monday is a sort of a controversial issue right now. Um, and I, I'm just trying to get to know um, the um, the fishing game uh, or the game and fisheries um, industry. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm a mediocre fisher and a mediocre hunter, but I do uh, greatly appreciate the outdoors. I spent a lot of time outdoors and um, you know, want to promote that as an industry, uh, not just for the revenue it generates for our economy, but also as a way to attract people to Pennsylvania, not just for tourism, though that's important, but to try to shift the demographics and get more young people to come to Pennsylvania after they um, graduate from high school or college and come here because they love the outdoors and all the opportunities we have on our, our streams and our rivers and our lakes. and um, and in our in our state game lands. Well, Senator Rothman, we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back here with more commonalities. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities. Is your business using analog strategies in a digital marketing world? If so, then contact Matthew or Rebecca Dowling at Coordinated360 for a professional consultation where we bring in-depth knowledge and functional expertise with a holistic perspective. Coordinated360 provides digital marketing, paid ad and media buying services, web design, social media management, video production and more for businesses, organizations and political campaigns. With decades of experience, Matt and Becky at Coordinated360 can help you craft your unique message and share it with the world. For a no-risk media evaluation and recommendations, call 724-320-2212 or visit us online at www.coordinated360.com. Find us also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter or email info at coordinated360.com. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support Commonalities and help keep us on the air by making a donation of $5, 10 or $25 or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities.online.
Hello Uniontown, Mayor Bill Gerke here. There's nothing quite like the feeling of home, that sense of belonging, those fall Friday nights under the lights, those winter nights in the gym watching our Red Raiders, those refreshing spring afternoons at Bailey Park rooting on our Red Raiders softball and baseball teams. I am grateful for those memories and hope our community's children and grandchildren can enjoy those memories too. But to do that, we have to plan for the future. During my first term in office, the city has got Bailey Park back to a place where we can be proud of. Begun our city's first comprehensive plan in over 20 years. Started work on the city's section of the Sheepskin Trail. Worked on eliminating blighted properties and are rebuilding the city's neighborhoods. We've updated the faulty equipment in the parking garages and we're bringing a more competitive, reliable, faster and less expensive internet service to our city residents. We have done a lot, but there's still more to do. So I, Bill Gerke, am running for a second term. We're Uniontown proud, we're Uniontown strong, and together we can continue to rebuild Uniontown for the next generation. Paid for by Mayor Bill Gerke. I'm Melinda Delarose. As an assistant district attorney, I've protected Fayette County families and fought to uphold our constitutional rights. As a prosecutor and trusted local attorney, I've provided victims of crime with a strong voice and put criminals behind bars. My pledge to you as judge is to follow the law, always maintain the highest ethical standards, and to run a courtroom that's respectful of your time and tax dollars. I'm Melinda Delarose, asking for your vote for judge. Paid for by friends of Melinda Delarose. Thank you for staying with us on Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling. My guest today is Senator Greg Rothman, who represents a district towards the center of the state. He is a newly minted uh, state senator, was a colleague of mine in the Pennsylvania House. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about uh, the makeup of the House, the Senate, and of course, uh, having a new governor here and how things are going to work together, as well as the uh, committees that Greg is on and uh, and the committee that he chairs. You know, in the spirit of President's Day, which just happened uh, yesterday, Greg, uh, I thought I would give you a chance to uh, to recognize your favorite U.S. president and maybe tell us a little bit about uh, why that individual is uh, is at the top of your list of U.S. presidents? Yeah, so you know, the, the my favorite president of my lifetime is Ronald Reagan. Um, Ronald Reagan inspired me to to get involved in public service. Um, he um, came came became president at a, a very critical time in our country's history when you know we had the malaise and the um, you know, God bless him, but Jimmy Carter, who's it sounds like he's on his deathbed, but Jimmy Carter had what he had done to our economy from inflation and uh, interest rates going through the roof and uh, the oil uh, embargo and the, the, you know, the, the issues we were having with uh, Russia and then the Soviet Union and communism marching in Central America and Eastern Europe into Poland. Ronald Reagan came along and I would like to think that, you know, maybe times were even tougher then than they are now. Uh, and he saved um, not just America, but saved the whole world. Um, he's the reason that communism um, and, the, and the, uh, the Soviet Union imploded. And he's the reason we had the great uh, 80s uh, economy that lasted through you know, uh, the, the huge economic expansion. So he's my favorite president uh, of my lifetime. And I actually had a chance to meet him and wrote a little book about him. Uh, I think Abraham Lincoln is probably... Uh, historically, my favorite president. I have a farm in Gettysburg, and I think what Abraham Lincoln did in the with the Fourteenth Amendment and Emancipation Proclamation, and you know, saving the nation from um, the the what the hideous practice of slavery, but then also keeping the nation together by willing to by willing to to uh, fight the Civil War. Um, I also love Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge uh, was from Vermont, but went to school in Amherst, Massachusetts. Uh, went to was the mayor of Northampton, was a state representative, a state senator, uh, a lieutenant governor, a governor of Massachusetts, went on to become the vice president and then president. And Calvin Coolidge uh, believed, I think, you know, shared what you and I believe that 
you know, the government functions best, which does least, <laughs> and let let the people do things and, and empower the people. It's the government of the people, by the people, for the people, the consent to the governed. So, you know, for a long time, they said, well, Calvin Coolidge didn't do anything. What did Calvin Coolidge do other than be president during the ro roaring 20s? Um, and then later, historians look back, and there have been some great books written about him. So wait a minute. He did exactly what he said he would do, which is stay out of the stay out of the lives of Americans and stay out of our businesses and our industries and let them thrive by having government leave them alone. So those are my three favorite presidents. Well, that, that, that's great feedback to get. And uh, and those are three presidents that I think as Republicans that we can draw a lot of connections to. Um, you know, I wanted to talk about uh, what you feel will be the biggest legislative priorities, not just for the Senate or for the House or for the governor, but what do you see us actually getting accomplished in this next two-year period here in Pennsylvania? Yeah, you know, one of the first pieces of legislation I introduced when I got to the House was to cut the corporate net income tax. Uh, I had worked for Jack Kemp and the Kemp Roth tax cuts of the 80s, uh, which uh, Ronald Reagan championed, were critical to uh, turning the economy around as a country. And I thought, cutting the corporate net income tax rates would do the same for Pennsylvania. Uh, it took seven years, but the governor actually signed um, it into law as part of the budget process. Senator Ryan Ahmet from uh, Lancaster had worked on it too. Many other people, Senator Michelle Brooks. Um, but now that we've passed that, I'd like to see it accelerated. Um, it, it, the, the way the bill passed, it does cut it a little bit, but it doesn't cut it enough. Um, to attract businesses to Pennsylvania. So I'd like to see that. You know, regu regulatory reform is such a, a big issue, not just for the Republicans, but all the all the private sector. We're all affected by these regulations. And during the COVID pandemic, um, the Governor Wolf's administration suspended a lot of regulations. And we should be looking at those regulations and saying, do we really need these since uh, we survived uh, having them suspended? And then I think energy is such a big issue for um, our our nation and with what's going on in Ukraine. Um, you know, Pennsylvania should be a, an exporter of energy. We should certainly uh, use the energy to our advantage to help bring manufacturing back to the Commonwealth and back to the country for that matter. Uh, and that we should be a leader um, in, in energy in all forms of energy, but, but certainly natural gas and oil that we're blessed to have and coal. Um, you know, I, it's sort of, I find it ironic that you know, and I'm all for electric vehicles, but let's be real. Electric vehicles are powered by coal fired or gas fired or, um, you know, in, in many cases in Pennsylvania nukes, um, very little energy is generated by windmills or, um, or solar panels or uh, hydroelectricity. Um, so, you know, we need to be promoting natural gas because it is safe and efficient and clean uh, and abundant. You know, and, and I live here right in the midst of uh, Marcellus Shell uh, land where, you know, we have just a, a plethora of gas and oil opportunities. And I believe if we were to have additional pipelines or ways to to transport that gas and oil, we could be an even larger player nationally um, in the export of gas and oil. But one of the big things that I know as I've worked with the industry um, that I've found is kind of the instability that Pennsylvania has with gas and oil. We've been talking about uh, an excise tax or or a gas tax uh, for a long period of time. Um, I always unfortunately leave some blame with, uh, with Governor Corbett in the fact that, you know, we had fees that we weren't calling taxes. So sometimes people say that we're not being taxed, but our fees that we pay are more than even some of the other states. But there is that instability in the market where uh, I think some gas and oil uh, providers are saying, you know, we just want stability. We want to know that uh, the laws aren't going to change when we are you know, $20 million into an investment or a big play here in Pennsylvania. Do you think we have the power to uh, to stabilize and, and solidify 
some of the regulation in gas and oil so that that stability is there and uh, and the manufacturers won't be afraid that they're going to be hit with some other tax after an investment has been made. Yeah, no, you're 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 spot on. I mean, they they need stability, and these are huge investments that they're making. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic that you know Governor Shapiro came out against uh, Pennsylvania joining the uh, regional greenhouse gas initiative, Reggie. Uh, he has been, um, you know, he has been supportive of the industry uh, as a candidate. Um, but um, I think that you know we need to make sure that. Um, People who invest in Pennsylvania and make large investments in Pennsylvania have their investments protected, and stability is a, a huge part of that issue. Um, you know, I, I've been talking about um, across the street from now Senator John Fetterman's house in Braddock, Pennsylvania, is the U.S. Steel plant, and U.S. Steel were you know they they were going to invest a billion dollars in that plant, but because of permit delays by Allegheny County and um, local governments too, they instead just decide to deploy that $1 billion in investments to Arkansas. So that that hurts our economy. Um, so it's not just stability, but it's um, responsiveness of the, of the state government and the permit issuers. Uh, I had a meeting yesterday with the, the new uh, proposed secretary of DEP, Richard Nijin, and uh, you know, his, he he recognizes that DEP is um, you know hindering our uh, ability to attract businesses to Pennsylvania and get economic investment. So uh, I think he's going to be uh, again. I'm optimistic that he's going to understand how important um, that is to our economy. And and you're absolutely right. Stability is uh, a main issue that investors want um, when they make investments into our Commonwealth. So, uh, you know, we are at the beginning of a session. At the, at the beginning of a session, we see a lot of co-sponsorship memos that go out um, from individuals that uh, that maybe are reintroducing something that they didn't get accomplished in the previous session uh, or some new ideas that they have had since they were recently out on the campaign trail talking to constituents so they come back and they're trying to fix some of those issues for you personally is there a, a legislative agenda or a an item that you have that uh, that you're looking to fix uh, i know we already talked about the corporate net income tax um, but do you have any co-sponsorship memo that you've put out recently uh, with any new legislation that you are championing or promoting yeah, so um, I, I just got done reading this morning about this uh, Philadelphia police officer, Temple University police officer who was shot point blank and killed. Um, the, the gun violence we have in uh, this country, I believe, can only be stopped by deterrence and by enforcing the laws we have. It's not going to be by punishing um, the, the, the law abiding gun owners. And you and I share um, respect for not just the Second Amendment, but the 21st um, the section 24 of our constitution, uh, which says that um, the right to uh, own firearms is to protect your life and your property and your family. And so section 21. So um, I introduced legislation that has death penalties for those who commit murders in safe spaces. So if you go into a school, uh, university, the, 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 the um, guy in Michigan State last week, um, or you kill someone in a church or a temple or at a, a sporting event or somewhere where, um, you know, you, you, you believe it should be a safe space, safe space that right now the death penalty is not a consideration or not allowed in those cases. But under my uh, law that I just introduced the co-sponsorship memo to uh, prior to the Michigan State shooting, um, and I introduced it in the House and it went nowhere after the, the Tree of Life shooting and so um in every one of these cases matt you know it i mean the, the temple university that poor officer was killed um african-american police officer father of four killed by an 18 year old bucks county um white um sort of upper middle class kid not kid he's a man he's 18 years old had a gun charge against him that wasn't enforced 
the Michigan State killer had a gun charge against him that was pleaded down and he didn't have to, it should have been a felony and he didn't have to, he should have never had a gun. And so we need to start enforcing the gun laws we have and we need to have death penalty on the table as a deterrent. Um, you know, when you have punishments for crimes, it says a, a deterrent as punishment, which I, I believe, you know, the um, Old Testament, when you take a life, you should give your life. Um, you can have your life taken. And then, of course, to protect society. So, and with the cost of keeping someone in prison, you know, you commit a heinous crime, you know, you kill or rape a child, um, rape and kill a child. I don't want to have to spend sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year to make sure that you're fed and clothed and have internet and cable television and you know in prison. I I, I want to see that you give up your life for that. So um, as a deterrent and as punishment and to protect society and certainly the fiscal cost of keeping someone in prison for life. Not to mention all the appeals and so the fact that the governor came out um, in the midst of all this gun violence uh, and said that he's not going to enforce the death penalties and not going to sign any death penalty orders was really disappointing and I think um, a mistake. And I think he should have, as a prosecutor, the attorney general's office should have known better. The last death penalty, if I'm correct, in Pennsylvania was in 1999, uh, the last execution that was carried out, rather. So it has been uh, quite some time. And, and uh, unfortunately, because I, I know the, uh, the governor's stance on the death penalty, I think you will uh, have a little bit of an uphill battle uh, getting that le legislation passed through. Um, you know, we're coming to the close of our time together today. I wanted you to give you an opportunity to uh, to share any final thoughts you may have for our listeners uh, before we have to go. Yeah, I just look, I want to talk about you, Matt. You you were a, a great member of the General Assembly, a great friend. Um, you know, I, I want to see you. I hope you stay involved and you are staying involved in public policy. And um, I, I just think that. Uh, your your listenership needs to know, um, you know what what I think of you, <laughs> what many of your colleagues thought of you. That you were a, a man of ideas and policy, and um, you know, really served your constituents well. And I loved the conversations we had together. And um, I stole a lot of your great ideas. So thank you, and and what you did for the Second Amendment Caucus um, to really um, you know help protect the Second Amendment um, it was it was all. You know, really praiseworthy. So I, I'm grateful to have you as a former colleague and friend and look forward to working with you in the future too. Well, and you hey, got a thank, great family. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to be on the show today, Greg. Uh, it was great talking with you and uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of good that you'll be able to do here in the Pennsylvania Senate. Best of luck to you. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities. Hello, Uniontown. Mayor Bill Gerke here. There's nothing quite like the feeling of home, that sense of belonging, those fall Friday nights under the lights, those winter nights in the gym watching our Red Raiders, those refreshing spring afternoons at Bailey Park rooting on our Red Raiders softball and baseball teams. I am grateful for those memories and hope our community's children and grandchildren can enjoy those memories too. But to do that, we have to plan for the future. During my first term in office, the city has got Bailey Park back to a place where we can be proud of. Begun our city's first comprehensive plan in over 20 years. Started work on the city section of the Sheepskin Trail. Worked on eliminating blighted properties and are rebuilding the city's neighborhoods. We've updated the faulty equipment in the parking garages and we're bringing a more competitive, reliable, faster and less expensive internet service to our city residents. We have done a lot, but there's still more to do. So I, Bill Gerke, am running for a second term. We're Uniontown proud, we're Uniontown strong, and together we can continue to rebuild Uniontown for the next generation. Paid for by Mayor Bill Gerke.
I'm Melinda Delarose. As an assistant district attorney, I've protected Fayette County families and fought to uphold our constitutional rights. As a prosecutor and trusted local attorney, I've provided victims of crime with a strong voice and put criminals behind bars. My pledge to you as judge is to follow the law, always maintain the highest ethical standards, and to run a courtroom that's respectful of your time and tax dollars. I'm Melinda Delarose, asking for your vote for judge. Paid for by friends of Melinda Delarose. Thank you for staying with us on Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling. My guest today was Senator Greg Rothman. I want to thank Greg, uh, who was a colleague of mine in the Pennsylvania House, for being with us today. But uh, before we go, I want to call your attention to a couple of places that uh, there are some additional resources. If you've been enjoying our program, Commonalities, uh, that you can visit one place is my personal website, www.matthew, D as in David, last name Dowling, D-O-W-L-I-N-G dot com. That's MatthewDDowling.com. You can visit that site for information on our show, Commonalities. You can find archived clips of all of our episode, episodes as well as transcripts from our episodes. And if you click on the news section, you'll find some of my most current writings that have been published in local newspapers, et cetera. There's also an about section uh, where you can find out more information about myself, as well as uh, the Laurel Highlands, which I call home. So visit MatthewDDowling.com. Also, I would encourage you to stop by Facebook and find my official public site, Matthew Dowling Public, and uh, you'll find uh, all of the news articles I share, as well as some of the content that you hear about on commonalities. This brings us to the end of today's broadcast. I want to thank you for visiting us and encourage you to reach out at any point in time to let us know who you'd like to hear from as a guest on the program and uh, what programs you're enjoying the most. Feel free to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities.